Okay. Good morning. Thank you guys for joining us today. Today we're going to be talking about um, navigating a Chromebook and what that all entails because I'm sure that you have figured out that navigating a Chromebook is a little different than navigating just a normal laptop or a computer. So we want to just kind of walk through some of the things that you can do on a Chromebook. We're going to share some keyboard shortcuts, things that hopefully make your life a little easier while using a Chromebook. So today is all about navigating a Chromebook. So before we begin, just wanted to go over some housekeeping for our webinar. The chat button, if you wanted to introduce yourself or you wanted to ask not only Marshall and I, but everybody who's attending the webinar a question, you can go ahead and put it in the chat and everyone can chime in with an answer. Or if you would just like the question to go back to just Marshall and I, you will see a Q&A box on your screen. If you wanna just click that, that allows you to ask a anonymous question. So you can go ahead and type your question in there at any time throughout the presentation. And then at 1030 or whenever we get done with going over navigating a Chromebook, Marshall and I will get to those questions. Okay, so quickly just wanna run through our agenda. So we're gonna talk about what is a Chromebook. We're gonna go over some trackpad controls. We're also gonna go over some of the different labels that you'll see on your keyboard. Um, we're gonna talk about the Chromebook shelf. We're gonna talk about um, ways that you can access your Google Drive on your Chromebook. We're also gonna talk about some of the accessibility features that you have on your Chromebook. We're gonna talk about different um, keyboards, so switching between uh, international and US keyboards, and then we're gonna end it with some keyboard uh, Chromebook shortcuts. So we first wanted to start with just explaining what a Chromebook is exactly, because a Chromebook, like Marshall iterated in the beginning, is very different from a normal desktop computer or any other type of laptop. So a Chromebook is basically just a different breed of computer, and it's a Google device. So the Chromebook runs off of everything Google, and it doesn't store anything on the computer itself. It runs everything through the web and through the cloud. So when you get on this Google device, everything that you're doing is from your Google Drive or from the internet, from another website or browser, but everything is stored in the cloud. So it's really easy to log into your Chromebook. All you have to do is just open it up, it'll turn on, and then you just enter your TUSD Google email address and password. And then for students and staff and anyone with a TUSD account, they're gonna be able to log into the Chromebook. We have our Chromebook set that only TUSD Google accounts are allowed on there. So uh, no personal accounts for students or anything like that. So just our TUSD Google accounts. And now we want to look at all of the buttons on the Chromebook. So if you look at the right side of the Chromebook, there's some buttons. So starting with the one closest to you, there's a volume button. So you can actually turn the volume up and down by hitting that first button. Then the next two are slots, and those would be for USB. So there's a regular USB slot, and then there's a USB type C, which you'll actually notice is the same exact USB link for your charging cable. And then the very last one farthest away from you is the wedge-shaped lock slot. And what that actually allows you to do is it's kind of like a bike lock. So if you were to take your Chromebook to a public place, you could buy a separate lock and you could lock your Chromebook to a stationary object. That way, for example, if you go to Starbucks and you walk away from your computer, you don't have to worry about someone taking your computer and walking away with it. Then if you look at the left-hand side of your Chromebook, there are some more buttons. So if we start with the farthest from you, the power button is actually on the side of our teacher Chromebooks along with our 912 Chromebooks. So that's a little different for the K8 Chromebooks. Then you have another USB type C. So on our teacher Chromebooks and 912, that actually means that you can charge our Chromebook from either side, which is kind of nice depending on where that outlet is. Then you have another regular USB drive. So I could plug in a memory, uh, like a thumb drive into it. Then you have a micro SD memory card reader. So that means if I had one of those little micro SD cards, I could stick that in there as well. And then you also have your headphone and mic combo jack. So just like how I have my earbuds in right now, that's where I plug it right in from. And so now we're gonna look at kind of the layout of the keyboard and some specific uh, Chromebook keys and stuff that you're gonna find on your Chromebook. 
So starting on the left-hand side, you have your search button there where normally on a normal keyboard is gonna be like the cap locks um, button. That is gonna be your search button. And then going to the top is your escape button. And then moving over, we have our refresh button. And then next to that is going to be a full screen button. Um, next to that is your window. So if you had multiple windows open, you could open that up and that's kind of like an app switcher. So you can um, pick through the windows that you have open. Um, next to that is you have your screen brightness. So whether you want to turn the brightness down or turn the brightness up, you could do that there. And then you have your media controls for volume. So the first one is mute. Second one is to turn the volume down. Third one is to turn the volume up. And then the last one is to lock the screen. So if you wanted to lock the screen so nobody could access stuff on your Chromebook, you could just hit that lock and it would um, lock the screen. And then at the bottom down there is the trackpad. And then so using the trackpad is very, very different from using a mouse. We all know that and it got, we had to get used to it. So when you use the trackpad, it's a little different if we want a regular click, right click, even just scrolling down a page. So to right click on the trackpad, you wanna take two fingers and you wanna just lightly tap. They can be together or spread apart. Once you just lightly tap on the trackpad, that'll bring up a right click. To scroll, you wanna just put two fingers on the trackpad and just gently either slide them up or down depending on the way that you want to actually scroll through the page. And then to just regularly click, just with one finger, you click on the trackpad. If you end up clicking with two fingers on the trackpad, then you end up right clicking. And then something else that you can do on your trackpad is you can drag and drop. So with, with um, clicking with one finger and then with the second finger, moving that item around. So if you were like, for example, in your Google Drive and you wanted to move a file into a folder, you could click with one finger and then with your second finger, you could move that file to a specific folder. Um, and then locking the screen. So pressing and hold the lock button um, would go ahead and lock the screen for you. And this is only on our teacher devices and our 912 devices. So signing out of the Chromebook, a lot of people just close it. That will sign you out as well. Hitting the lock button will also just close it down and essentially sign you out. But if you'd like to actually power down your Chromebook, if you click on the system tray in the bottom right hand corner, so it's where the time is, a menu will come up and that's where you'll have the menu to actually sign out or the power button to power down your Chromebook. And then I wanted to just point out that it is a good idea to actually go through the process and shut down your Chromebook. Either, I know we're all at home now, but at the end of the day, when you're done working on your Chromebook or for long periods of time where you're not gonna be on your Chromebook, it's a good idea to always just shut down, not even just your Chromebook, but any device when you're not using it. And I kind of like to explain to people that powering down your devices is like us going to sleep at night. We get a recharge, we get a reset, but especially for our Chromebook, it helps to clear anything that's going on with it. It helps it move a lot faster. And if you have devices at home that aren't Chromebooks and they start slowing down, think about when the last time was that you did a full shutdown on your device, not just holding down the power button and waiting till it turned off, but actually going to the start menu and clicking power and clicking shutdown because your computers, the longevity and how they actually run will be prolonged by just making the powering down and the shutting down a normal part of your routine. And also too, with powering down your Chromebook, it helps, um, be, it helps the Chromebook able to um, grab like new updates and stuff like that. So if you just keep it on, it's not gonna fetch those new updates, but powering down, powering back up, it's gonna allow it to, to grab those, any new updates that are available for the device or for Chrome or anything like that. Okay, so now we are logged in, we're in our Chromebook. And so this is kind of like what um, you would see. So in the bottom left-hand corner, you have a little circle there, that's your app launcher. So if you click on that, you're gonna, you're gonna see any apps that are um, associated with your account. This, the bottom is the Chromebook shelf and then um, any apps and things that you see at the bottom there, those are ones that are pinned to your shelf. And then you will see in the bottom right-hand corner, you will see the keyboard language. So for example, this one's in US. And then you'll also see the time, the battery life, any type of wireless connection, any type of recent downloaded files. 
Um, so like next to us Heather's the number two, those are downloaded files and stuff are in there. So that's all kind of at a glance, what you will see on your Chromebook screen and your Chromebook shelf. And so if you were to click where the time is, so on that system tray, it brings up a whole set of options. So you can see where, like my little icon of a monkey, next to that is a sign out button. Next to that one would be a power button or a lock. But you can also see where I've connected to Wi-Fi. So the Wi-Fi on this computer was called Kaizen and then the Bluetooth next to it. Then there's accessibility. So there's a lot of different options that this clicking on the time actually opens up to allow us to, either see or touch or just mess with and change. And then navigating the shelf here. So if I click on that app button there, the little circle, it's gonna bring up kind of a quick view and it's gonna show me some of my most recent apps. It's gonna, um, I can search for apps on here. And then if I wanted to reveal everything, I would click um, the arrow at the top to open up everything. And then I would be greeted with this screen. So this is any app that's associated with my, with my account. So I can see all my apps. I can search for apps. I can scroll through them if there's different pages. And then I can access them all through here. And then one of the great things about like when you open up um, your Chromebook, if you were to type in that search box, the name of a slide presentation, it'll actually also pull up the results from your Google Drive. So there's a couple ways to access your files from your Google Drive. You could click on the apps launcher and you could click where it says files, or you could literally just type in the search box if you know the name of the file that you're looking for. And then when you click on the file button, this screen pops up. And so you'll see on the left-hand side that there's a recent audio, images, videos, my file, and the Google Drive. Everything that you do on your Chromebook is connected to your Google Drive account. So everything that you want to open would be in your Google Drive. So then when you click your Google Drive, your entire screen were to change. And then it'll show you where all of those files are. So when I click my Google Drive, it shows me my drive. And then I can keep scrolling and scrolling and it'll show me any of the shared drives that I'm attached to, all of my folders that I have, and I can get to all of my files this way. So remember that the Chromebook works through Google Drive. So whether I open up Google literally and I go to my web browser and I click on my waffle, I can access my files that way. Or if I just go to my app launcher on my little shelf on the bottom of my Chromebook, and I go to my files, it's the same thing. I'm still accessing the same files all through my Google Drive. Okay, so if we were going to, you know, access our drive and stuff traditionally, we would go to Google and then we could access the waffle to get to our Google Drive. And then these are any type of extensions that we have associated with our account. And to know which extensions you can use and which ones are approved, we have them on our app approved list. So that list is on our EdTech and TUSD website. We have a list of apps. We have a list of extensions and stuff that are approved. So anyone that you have downloaded and then you have enabled will show up here um, when you open up Chrome. And then if you hit the little star, that's going to add it to your favorites or to your bookmarks. So like on this screenshot here, we have Outlook for the web, the, the district website, the EdTech and TUSD. Those are all websites that Satara went through and she clicked the little star and then she added them to her bookmark bar. So when she opens up Chrome, they're right there. And the nice thing about doing it this way is since it's linked to your Chrome and to your Chrome account and your Google account, I can open up Chrome on my personal computer. I can log in with my TUSD. Um, account and all these bookmarks and all these extensions come with it. So it's not just stuck on our Chromebook. They're linked to our Google account and wherever we log in with that Google account, those extensions and bookmarks come with us. <clears throat> and then, like I said, so this is our bookmarks favorites bar. And then this is the, they call it the, the Omnibox or the search bar. So there I can 
type in the name of a URL, can type in the name of a website I want to go to. You can actually search for documents up here as well. So if I wanted to search for something in my drive, I could do that there too, because it's all Google, it's all connected. So I can search for documents in my drive when I'm in drive, or I can just search in the Omnibox for um, different files and stuff, and I can open them straight, straight from there. And then at the top is where you have your tabs that are open. So this one's a new tab. If I click the little plus next to it, that's gonna open up another tab for me. So I can access tabs there. And then if I click on the plus, that's where I can go to create new tabs. And so then if you wanted to access your Google Drive, one another way is to open up the Chrome browser and click on your waffle. When you click on your waffle, you'll have all of these choices. Now I can actually rearrange these choices. If I wanted my Google Classroom to be the first thing up there, I can click on it and drag all of those to wherever I want. So I have my Gmail, I have my calendar, my drive, classroom, docs, anything that you've ever opened. And I can keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and it would show me all of the different apps that are associated with my Google account. So then once we click on the waffle and we go into drive, here's some kind of basic navigation. So at the top is where you're going to search. You're going to search within your drive. You can search for names of documents. You can search for file type. So if you know you're looking for an image file, but you're not sure what that was called, you can click the little down arrow that's next to the red arrow up there and you can filter it out and say like, I just want to look at image files or I just want to look at docs or I just want to look at slides and you can kind of filter things that way. And then on the left hand side there is where you're going to see the new button. So the new button is where you're going to create new documents, new slides, new folders. Um, you also have your my drive you have under that is shared drives. So any type of shared drive that you're a part of, um, you have the shared with me section. So any documents or anything that have been shared with you. Your recent documents are under the recent section. Anything that you have starred will show up in the starred section. And then your trash is anything that you have put in the trash. So then if we were to click the new button, so we're in our drive, we click the new button, a bunch of choices will come up. We can create a new folder. We can upload a file from our computer. So let's say that we have a Microsoft Word file at our desktop at school, and we want to convert it to a Google Doc. I can hit file upload, find that Microsoft Word file on my desktop computer and upload it into my Google Drive. And then I can actually share it with my students. Folder upload, if I have an entire folder on my desktop computer, so when I'm at school I can, and I'm on my desktop computer, I can upload that entire folder into my Google Drive. If I want to open a brand new Google Doc or a Google Sheet or a Google Slide, I can. And then if I hit the more button, so many more options are going to come up. So I can create a Google form, a Google drawing, a new map, a Google site. And then I could have kept scrolling and scrolling to get even more options. So there's a few different ways that I can get to all of these different apps. I can hit new, I could have hit my waffle, and there's a few more that we'll share when we get to the shortcuts as well. So now we want to kind of hit on some of the accessibility features that are available on a Chromebook. So if you need some low vision support, you can increase the cursor size. You can add a highlighted circle around the cursor. Um, you can access um, high contrast mode. You can increase the size of everything on the screen. And then you can have a docked um, magnifiers. Also, if you need some reading slash understanding text features. There's a select to speech function there. There's also Chromevox, which Chromevox will, will read text back to you. And then there's also a read and write extension that's available to use as well. Um, and then writing mobility support. So there's dictation. There's an on-screen keyboard that's available. There's an automatic click. So you don't actually have to click the trackpad once you move your cursor to something and you wait a second it'll automatically click for you and then there is the co-writer extension that is available as well so in order to access these accessibility features these could be for teachers but these can also be used for the majority of our students 
So in order to access these features, at the very bottom right, you would click on the system tray or the time. Or you could also press Alt-Shift-S. It'll bring up the same menu options. And then you would select settings. Some people call it the little settings cog. Um, someone actually called it a flower. And so I've been going with that because I love that. And once you click on the little settings cog flower, at the bottom, you'll want to select advanced. So there's going to be an advanced function. And then you'll be able to get into the accessibility section where you can manage all of these features so that all of the features are there and you can turn on and off whichever features you wish. And then if you'd like to have quick access to the accessibility features, you can always turn on the accessibility feature to show in your system menu. So before, when we showed you the system tray, the accessibility feature actually showed up within there because that was a setting that I turned on on my Chromebook to actually show. That way I didn't have to go into the settings every single time. And another way you can access this is if you just clicked the little magnifying glass on your keyboard in the search box and you just searched accessibility feature, it'll come right up as well. So enabling an international keyboard. So this would be helpful if you needed to type something in a different language. So especially for our dual immersion students who are typing things in Spanish, you can enable this international key. So when you're typing, you get all the accents and everything that you need. So um, controlling this controls the accent type with one click instead of having to insert special characters and do all these other things. So it makes it really streamlined, makes it really easy um, to be able to add those accents and stuff in there. We have linked in here, we have linked some written directions that if you wanted to follow through or if you wanted to follow along and um, follow those to, to be able to enable the international keyboard. And then we also have a video with directions on how to enable this feature as well. And then some super useful keyboard shortcuts and then a new one that I learned the other day that I text Marshall about. <laughs> um, so these keyboard shortcuts really, really do save you time. The alt with the bracket, that actually will dock your window. So what that means is if you have two things on your screen and you want to see them side by side, it's called docking your window or kind of putting your screen in sort of like a split screen mode. So if you were to hit Alt and then a bracket, it would then put that window to the left side. And then if you hit Alt and the right bracket, it would put that window to the right side. Or if you want to do a screenshot or like a snip, on, our, on my desktop, I have a snipping tool, and that's my favorite tool. But on the Chromebook, I love it even better because it's so much faster. So if I hit Control Shift and then the Windows key, I can highlight anything I want and I can snip it. So it essentially makes a copy. And then on my Chromebook, it shows in the bottom right corner that, do you want to copy this picture to your clipboard? And I say yes, I click a button and I can paste it wherever I want. That has made my life with making presentations or posters, anything in Google Slides or anything in Google or on the internet so much faster. In order to like highlight a URL or put in a link, you can hit Control L and the URL at the top. So where it actually says like http.www.google.com. Control L will highlight it. And then if I wanted to link it somewhere, I could hit Control K and then it would bring up the little box around a word that I want to link. So if you look on the left where I said get the PDF here, I created a link and I copied the URL and I pasted it right there. If I wanted to rotate my screen, there's the control shift and then the little like refresh button on your Chromebook that has you rotate the screen. So sometimes when we're in class and our students are like, oh, my screen's rotated. And then they take their Chromebook and they put it on the side because they say they don't know how to fix it. <laughs> That's how you can fix it for them. And another one is opening a tab that you just closed would be control shift T. All of these shortcuts are amazing. Or if you have multiple tabs open, if you hit control one, it takes you to your first tab or control two, it takes you to your second tab. Control three, it takes you to your third tab. That was what I found out the other day when I text Marshall, because I was trying to do an exclamation mark. And instead of hitting shift, I hit control and it took me to my first tab. And I was so excited because I found something new. <laughs> Um, and then, uh, you know how we talked earlier about the, the apps that you can have in your shelf at the bottom? So you can have up to eight apps down there. And um, instead of having to move your cursor down, click on it to open it, if you hit Alt and either 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or eight, it's going to launch that specific app. So Alt one will launch the first one, Alt two will launch the second one and so on. So those are just kind of quick little keyboard shortcuts to try to save you some time. It might only save you, you know, three seconds, but if it's something that you're doing every day, those three seconds will, will add up. So these are nice little keyboard shortcuts to use. We have the PDF version there. So if you click on that, you can, you can open it up, you can save it, you can download it, you can print it out. So you have it. So um, you have it easily accessible. All right, so that's all we have for you guys today. Uh, thank you guys for joining us. Tomorrow, we are going to be talking about Google Slides and we're gonna be going beyond Google Slides. So we're gonna be talking about all the things that we can do with Google Slides instead of just using it as a presentation tool. It is a nice presentation tool, but there's lots of things that you can do with it besides just creating presentations. So that's gonna be tomorrow, same time, 10 o'clock. Um, I know we uh, mentioned it in the email today, but we are going five days a week this week with PD. So normally we just do Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, but we are going Monday through Friday for you guys today. So make sure you check out the schedule to see what we have coming up. And um, we hope that you guys will join us tomorrow. And we hope you guys enjoyed our presentation today. And we hope you have a good day. And we will talk to you shortly.